if I'm w- across my customer and I'm, tr- I have my agenda in my head and all I'm thinking about is how I'm going to get the deposit. I'm, I'm, what am I going to do to get them to give me their credit card? So I can go talk to my manager. It, you know, it's like, I might miss the little subtleties where they're trying to tell me their pain and I'm not even hearing it because I'm too focused up here. I'm not, I'm not even listening. They're telling me how to sell them and I'm not paying attention because I'm in my own way. So that's at the very, you know, that that's the, the, the first part of it. But then to go deeper is, you know, I've done, I'm not a talkative guy. Like I, I've done well in sales because I know how to shut up and listen and people to just have to be that space with them, to sit there and let them talk to me, to be present with them is one of the, the best gifts you can, to be present with somebody is one of the best gifts you can give to them. People are so starved, you know, no one listens to them. You know, people are just, everyone's out for, for their own thing. And especially when you could show up in, in a, a sales environment and like just be there as a person and not have, you know, not have some motive. Get you some radio. Hey everybody. Welcome back to the get you some radio show. I'm your host, Terry Lancaster. And I got, I uh, got another buddy of mine. I'm, I'm bad about dipping into my buddies, but I know so many uh, interesting people. Uh, I love to have them on the show and talk today. We're going to talking, we're talking to my friend, Michael Defern. Michael's uh, from here in Nashville. He's got a new book, uh, just come out just a couple of weeks ago. It's called How to Connect, a guide to creating content that resonates with your ideal customer. So this is, this, as you know, this is right in my wheelhouse. We're, we're talking about connecting and customers and uh, uh, connecting customers, creating content and, and building that personal one-on-one relationship. Michael, welcome to the show, buddy. How you doing? I'm good, Terry. Thank you so much. I'm honored. So, so why, why, why did you write a book about how to connect? I mean, and let's start with that connect. Uh, you know, we've all got LinkedIn accounts and Facebook accounts. Uh, why did you write a book about connecting? And is that about social media? Is that what you're talking about? So I struggled with what to title this. This was tough because really what it, to me, it's about the connection that happens person to person. So it's, you know, it's not a really a strategy about networking or, you know, working social media. It's about creating content, which, you know, is primarily in my world video, but it could be just, you know, a blog post. And, but what are the words and the way things are said that, that resonates with another person? Because this, this is something that I've been doing for years, but I feel like um, especially in this such a purely online world, people, we need to go deeper. We need to make ourselves more vulnerable to connect with other, with other people. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so why, why? I mean, so let's say I'm selling cars yeah. in Topeka, Kansas, and, uh, and I, I, I sell Chevrolets in Topeka, Kansas, and uh, I want to sell more Chevrolets. I want to make more money. I want to spend more time with my family. Why on earth do I care if I connect with, uh, with Joe Blow who wants to come in and buy a, buy a Chevy truck? What's, how's that help me? Well, so if, there's lots of people that can sell a Chevy. So it, really, this is kind of a personal branding thing is kind of the way I, I look at it. Because when you're selling something, you know, you're essentially selling yourself first. I, it, you know, unless I'm out there shouting lowest price, and I'm trying to just get people with some kind of a sale. I much prefer, and I know you feel this way too. It's like, how can we connect? How can we be, have a relationship first? So you value me as a person. And then that's where it starts for me. So that's what I'm trying to find. Who are the people that get me? Not because of what I sell, but because of who I am. Who are the people that, that, that get me? So you're, you're looking to, to find, find your tribe, the people, the people that you, you, you connect with. And in the book, you talked about, you, you talked about exactly that. You said you really have a, you laid out a three-step process and step number one was, uh, was not, it was not really only identifying this ideal customer that you want to have. It's, it's, it's obtaining the, uh, the clarity within yourself so that you can recognize 
this this ideal customer? Yeah, what, 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 yeah. it's that? kind of um, so. Step one, I don't have the exact wording at the tip of my tongue, but it's essentially identifying your, your who's your ideal client is. But it's not just about like you said who you know that they talk about that in marketing all the time. Who's your ideal client? But who who do I what what can I create in terms of content that I won't get bored creating? That's a yeah. big part of it. It's like, what can I do that fires me up? So it's a combination, the intersection of what fires me up that, and then who will also resonate with that. Yeah. So I think that's a lot of people where people go wrong is they're like, oh, I'm going to do regular blog posts on X, Y, Z. And then after a few months, they fizzle out or it doesn't have the necessary depth and weight to it to actually excite somebody. Like it, it seems like a facade. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, in in the uh, in the marketing books and in, in everything you read online, they 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 say, okay, you have to ID. Uh, and, and this is my favorite thing. They come out with a word for it. We uh, when I when I, I'm I'm an old dude, so we <laughs> called it the ideal customer. Uh, if if you go into any of the newfangled marketing stuff, they talk about you have to identify your avatar, right? You have to identify this this representative <laughs> of your ideal client. And what they're what they're pointing into is an avatar is mostly demographics and psychographics. They want you to boil it down to a number. Uh, they're black, they're white, they're male, they're female, they're 35 to 44, they're 25 to 34. They, they check yeah. off these criteria in the boxes and they, and they want to put everybody in, in these pigeonholes. But that's not what you're talking about, right? No. Um, it's, um, it's tough. I mean, so the example, so for me, this kind of journey for me, it's began because I like to talk about spirituality and I like to talk about mindfulness and um, you know, I have a history with substance abuse and I have, a, I have a desire to help people. So if my day job is producing videos, how do I, how do I intersect the two? And that's kind of where this whole thing started was uh, trying to find a way that I can talk. So here's an example. So my target market would be people that are interested in mindfulness, awakening, like the, the woo woo stuff woo-woo. who also happen to own a business. So it's almost like we're not, I'm not looking for people who make a certain amount of money or those kind of like demographics, like you were talking about. I'm looking for people who, you know, maybe have a cert, have share the same interests with me. That's, that's kind of where we're going first. Right. That makes sense. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing, the example I use is I end up talking to a, to a lot of folks in the financial services industry. And, uh, and of course I talk about the same stuff that you talk about social media and connecting and creating content and, and putting yourself out there and personal branding. And um, so a, a lot of times in financial services, they have a hesitancy. They say, well, I can't talk about financial services because there's so many regulations and I can't do this and I can't do that. And I, I, I you know, I have to get permission to do all this. And I go, OK, great. Yeah. Do you like cookies? <laughs> yeah, I bake cookies all the time. Do you think some of your other clients like cookies? Sure. Then then talk about cookies. You know, the, 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 what, whatever it is you like to talk about, there are other people who like to talk about that. And some of those are going to be the people who also are going to be able to buy your whatever it is that you're selling. Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. So, so your, 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 your day job, let's talk about your day job. What is your day job? And then, and then when we get through the day job, I want to talk about the woo-woo stuff because I love the woo-woo stuff. We're going to go all, <laughs> all on that. So, so let's talk about your day job. How, what do you do? So for a little over 10 years, I've had a, a video and video production and photography company with my wife, Heather. And um, so we've been, we've been essentially working with business owners um, we were up in Connecticut f- up until rec- up a few years. We've been down in Nashville. Um, and so we, our whole thing is conversational video filming. That's kind of our niche where I'm looking to just, y- you let somebody talk long enough and you get them into this moment through a conversation and they're going to say it's, they're going to, their passion is going to come out one way or another. That's kind of our process, but um, so it's, 
I mean, it's video production. We do all kinds of things, but that's been our, you know, our angle, which is very much in line with, with what I'm getting to with this book here. It's like letting, getting someone to a place where they can authentically put out content that's, you know, from their heart, that's going to resonate with the viewer. So instead of making a slick commercial, we don't do too much of that. Most of it is really about capturing, you know, the profile of the person. Yeah. So if you, (laughs) if you were interviewing Michael Defern, what would you, uh, what would you ask? How would you, how would you get his passion to come out? What, 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 what do we talk about? Oh God. Um, they see, this is the challenge because I'm never on the other end of the, <laughs> right? the camera here. Um, so I have a passion for, you know, human potential, you know, what, I mean, I have this whole thing about, you know, essentially we lie to ourselves. We get in our own way with our thoughts and like most of the thoughts that are going through my head are a lie. And so I've been hung up on this for years, you know, and trying to figure out a way to hack my own brain. You know, I'm not so much into just like sitting and meditating and just doing the Zen Buddha thing. It's more about a walking around. Can I be present in the moment? Can I enjoy standing out on the porch, looking at the leaves blowing in the wind? Can I enjoy that versus, you know, the old Mike years ago would require a mass quantity of of substances put into my body to have any kind of enjoyment. So um, there's that sprinkled in. So I, that's kind of like the core. How do I just enjoy being? And I try to express that through my work, through video production, through writing and through music, through songwriting and performance. That's, that's another thing I'm into. Yeah. So how, how, how do the, the people, the people who are watching, and again, most of the audience with the Get You Some Radio Show, they're, they're salespeople or they're entrepreneurs, a lot of solopreneurs, a lot of folks in the automotive industry uh, pay attention to it. A lot of folks yep. around Nashville who you, who you probably know, who, who they watch it. How do they find this, this, uh, this zenness inside themselves to, to em- embrace the leaves? And then how does that, uh, how does that affect their, how does that affect the work? How does, how does that help them, uh, you know, be better, be better at who they are and what they do? Yeah. So the, the things that I try to do, you know, I even do it right now. You know, I'm, I'm here talking with you and it's really easy for me to be in my head thinking about what do I want to say next? And, you know, we want to pre-plan, we want to control the situation and, so I, I try to get into my body as much as possible. You know, uh, this is something that I would recommend to people. It just try to take some of the things you're already doing in your day and just feel them more. So even something like, uh, you know, when you're making a pot of coffee. So instead of just like mindlessly doing it, it's like, this sounds kind of nuts, but it's like, take the basket out slowly, like feel the sensations of removing, you know, moving the filter from the basket. And then it's just like slowing everything down. So where you can feel things happening, you know, and of course going into your body, you know, feeling your breath, feeling um, your feet push against the floor. It's just folk taking that energy kind of like out of your head and into your body. How is it, is any of this landing or is this, is this? No, no. I mean, I, I, I think you're dead on. I'm, I'm, I'm just letting, I'm letting you ramble. I'm looking, I'm looking for the, for the, for the golden thing to come on. But I mean, I mean, I, th- I think you're dead on because I, I do exactly the same thing. I, I meditate on, on a regular basis and I meditate on a continual basis because I try to be present here now all the time. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and what it does for me is I, I also, uh, you know, come from a background of, 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 of an addict, of addiction. I, uh, haven't had a drink in eight years now. So that's the, that's the thing that's on my yeah, ladder. That's amazing. And, and I think the thing that makes that possible is, is because there's always been an itch in my head and, uh, and whether that itch is, I want another drink, 
or whether that itch is I want to go make more money or whether that itch is I want to go to a party and have a good time. There's always this itch. There's this yeah. continual wanting uh, that I have to scratch. And the more I'm here now and smelling the coffee as I make it, and if I'm smelling the coffee, I'm not thinking about, okay, I need to go to a party. And if I'm, I'm touching the basket when I pull that out, I'm not thinking I need to have a beer. It just quiet. The more I'm connected to the present moment, the, the less itchy my head is thinking about some other moment. And, and the way I explain yep. that is, is we continually let imaginary there and then fuck up perfectly good here and nows because we want to get to them. Uh, so, so yeah, you're, 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 you're speaking my language. It's, it's the right thing. It's, I mean, it, you nailed it. And, and this, none of this is new. It's just, you know, it, I wish I could just tell someone how to do this more easily, but it's, you know, I spent years trying to meditate, sitting quietly. And it's just like, it's insanity. You know, like the brain is just like, my brain is just tormenting me, will not leave me alone. And so to make real change required, you know, how do I just not do this five minutes or even, even if I sat for an hour a day and meditated, that's not as powerful as can I find a way to like, bring that practice into everything I do. So when I'm on the phone with somebody, can I like hold on to something? Like I'm holding on to this hair tie right now to like remind myself, I'm feeling the sensations of this to stay anchored and not go into my head down the rabbit holes while I'm supposed to be present on this phone call. Yeah. And so I I actually had this awareness this morning. So a lot of people are not even going to get this. The, this idea of be, being aware of even your thoughts. A lot of people I know, they just, it's just they, they, they identify with their thoughts and it's just, it is what it is. They are not aware that who, the real them is this other thing, this awareness that can like have some control over those thoughts. So just breaking, just having that awareness that you could actually do something about it is, is kind of step one. But then step two is, are you going to be brave enough to not engage those thoughts? So here's what happened this morning. I had this crazy little epiphany where I I don't know what, what I forget what I was doing, but I caught myself having a negative thought and I'm like, my brain is all like worried about this thing, you know, talking to me about worried about what are we going to do? And I I always want to have everything just right. Like the perfect master plan going in my head to placate it. And, and I just had this moment where I realized that that's just a bullshit thought. I don't need to engage it. Like I can just let it go, but it's easy to want to talk to yourself and say, no, here's what we're going to do. Everything's going to be all right. But it was just unnecessary. So it's like, Noticing that you're having thoughts and that you can do something about it is kind of step one. But then step two is like, do I have the, the strength to like let shit go and not engage every little thought that pops in? Yeah, no, I think that's spot on. And that's why that's I, I, I do woo woo right there. Yeah. That's the woo woo stuff. That's why I do the, uh, the 10, 15 minute meditations, not because that's where the sweetness is. That's, that's not where the honey is. That's just, that's working out. That's that's just training for my brain because I, I I meditate for 15 minutes to prove to myself that I can become aware of these thoughts and I don't have to follow them down the rabbit hole. And and, yeah. and the, the more I don't follow them, the stronger I am to not follow them. And, and you're right. Everybody's not going to get it. It's woo-woo. If you, if you ever want to feel like, like you got three heads, step in front of a room full of car salespeople and start talking about meditation. And I mean, you, you, but they're going to look at you like you got three heads. It is, it is way outside the sphere, but I'm going to bring it back to the customers and why it's important. So, so you, you, you create conversational video yeah. tell, and, and, and the whole point is, is being conversational and, and getting, getting to the, to the real them and finding that internal passion. Let's talk about with customers when you're completely there with your customer. And you're completely present in the moment and in the conversation that you're having with them, and you for, and you and you have that that brief shining moment where you're connecting uh, on a on an even deeper than human level. The you know the whole namaste thing. You know, you know we, yeah. 
when you is when you are connecting with you when you when when you're forming that connection how does that how does how do customers respond to that how do other people respond to that yeah i i, I know exactly where you're going with this because so why would anyone care you know what if i was a salesperson why would i what do i get out of being present and practicing this mindfulness stuff so at the at the tip of the iceberg at the very least you're going to hear stuff that you wouldn't otherwise hear if you're in your head. Like if I'm in a, if I'm w- across my customer and I'm, tr- I have my agenda in my head and all I'm thinking about is how I'm going to get the deposit. I'm, I'm, what am I going to do to get them to give me their credit card? So I can go talk to my manager. It, you know, it's like, I might miss the little subtleties where they're trying to tell me their pain and I'm not even hearing it because I'm too focused up here. I'm not, I'm not even listening. They're telling me how to sell them and I'm not paying attention because I'm in my own way. So that's at the very, you know, that that's the, the, the first part of it. But then to go deeper is, you know, I've done, I'm not a talkative guy. Like I, I've done well in sales because I know how to shut up and listen and people to just have to be that space with them, to sit there and let them talk to me, to be present with them is one of the, the best gifts you can, to be present with somebody is one of the best gifts you can give to them. People are so starved, you know, no one listens to them. You know, people are just, everyone's out for, for their own thing. And especially when you could show up in, in a, a sales environment and like just be there as a person and not have, you know, not have some motive. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I think pe- people are starved for a connection and that's uh that's the root of all addiction. And it's, it's the root of consumerism that we, we all, we, we all want this thing. Uh, and I, I think deep down the, the, the thing is connection. And uh, if you can give people that, even if it's just for, for 30 seconds, why we have 30 seconds standing in line at the gas station or 30 minutes sitting down at the desk, trying to work out a deal. If you can, if you can give them real human connection, that's uh people are starved for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. So, so let's take that mindfulness and connection that, and that deep down authenticity and, and, uh, and, and bring it back to the book. And uh, step two is is creating content that resonates with this ideal customer. Uh, so once you know, you know, once you know, uh, when, 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 once you're once you're fully authentic and have clarity on who you are and who, who your ideal customer is and what you want to talk about, um, what are what are things that you do to uh, to to create the content to maintain maintain the connection with them? Yeah. Uh, so I mean. There's different ways. I I talk about some different suggestions in the book, but my favorite thing, which comes from our video process is to film either film with, you know, with a camera or just the audio of a conversation. So you need to find somebody to talk to number one. um, And then you basically have, you talk it out. And the whole, the whole thing here is trying to, get to that place where you're in flow and you're not thinking. Have you ever had a, 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 a really good one-to-one with somebody or a coffee chat and you're just, you're, you're talking and then you just say something and you're like, man, I wish I, I re- was recording that. Or I wish I wrote that down. That's what we're looking for. We're looking, let, let the recording, let it roll, get a good person to talk to and let the conversation go where it goes and then edit out, pull out the moments, pull out the good moments. And that's, I mean, that's kind of what we're doing here, you know, and, and so that the challenge is I'm even, I'm seeing myself do it because here we are. I want to look good. I want to say the right things. So there's a part of me right now that's not quite letting my guard down with you. Mm-hmm. And we've been at this a little while, I don't know, 20 minutes, maybe, yes. maybe a little longer. Yeah. I find that with most of my clients, when I'm doing a video project, we may not get there until 45 minutes in. You need to let people settle in and get comfortable to where, 
something you access it something deeper and that's where to me that's where the, the the genius comes from not from it needs to come it's the same thing like when um anyone who's ever you know written a song or you know written something profound it seems to just like come out of nowhere it's like if you said i'm going to sit down and write something you're usually doomed it's like i'm gonna it's it's too contrived so we're looking to set the scene so that something magical comes out from someplace deeper. And, and I found the best way to do that is to have an, an, an unscripted conversation and then go back and you may not even know what's happening until you, you look at the footage. Yeah. But what, I mean, and, and I deal with so many people and I'm sure you do too. Um, you know, I'm bashful. I'm camera shy. I'm not good on camera. I don't sound good. I don't like the way my voice sounds. I don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a movie star handsome. How do you, yeah. how, do you get, how do you get people around that? Yeah. Well, it's, sometimes you can't, you know, but so that's why you, uh, however, are a movie star handsome brother. I just want to put that out front right there. So, uh, so well, you're good to go. Thanks Terry. You, you should have led with that. That would have <laughs> made me more comfortable. <laughs> Um, so I understand that, you know, if you let somebody else take control, I think everyone is interesting and beautiful in their own way. And we all judge ourselves, you know, even like, I don't like the way I look either. We, the most pretty people still have hangups, how they look, but if you can let somebody from the outside make the judgment about what's good and what's not good and put that out there for you, if you can get past that. I encourage you to, because people want, people want real authentic. They don't want some airbrushed bullshit, but so the people that absolutely do not want to be on camera, you know, in the book, I talk about, you know, using recording the conversation, but then you can transcribe the words into a blog post, or you can just use the audio without the video. You know, it's still using that conversation as the catalyst to make for the words to come out, but it doesn't have to be video in the end. Right. right. So step three, step three of your uh, three part process in the how to connect book was as to make it easy for people to raise their hands, make it easy for people to do business with you. What does that mean? So this whole thing is kind of a, in a mag, uh, I don't know what that word is. I was going to say an amalgam of uh, amalgamation amalgamation thank you look um, at my english degree coming in handy <laughs> it, it's a it's a combo of uh, a variety of different marketing concepts so i um i'm a big believer in cultivating an email list and so essentially putting out your regular content so you know who your ideal client is you know what's a topic that you can blog on create content for that you're passionate about that you won't fizzle out on that you're willing to go the long haul with that, you know, six months in and you're still getting crickets, but you're still fired up about putting it out there. So that's first, but then how to actually monetize that, how to, how to go anywhere with that. To me, it's all about sending regular content out to, a list of people, even if it's only 20 people in the beginning, do it, keep growing it and growing it. But then the step three is what are the things that you can offer them to get them to engage? So this is where you could bring in, you know, a call to action that's related to your business. So, I mean, it, it, one of my favorite, um, uh, little stories. One of, one of my mentors is Dean Jackson. I don't know if you're familiar. With what. I don't think so. Dean, you, you, you probably heard of, um, I love marketing. They have a podcast, Dean Jackson, and Joe Polish. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, so Dean talks about this. He talks about offering people a cookie. So if, if, if I had you over to my house and I said, Terry, um, make yourself comfortable. Um, if you want, you know, there's plenty of food in the fridge, drinks, sodas, you know, go help yourself. My house is your house. The chances that you're going to do that are, are slim. You're not going to go in there and make a sandwich in my kitchen. 
But if I bring out a plate of cookies and say, here, here, I just bake some chocolate chip cookies. They're still warm and soft here. Would you like one? And I put it under your nose. You're probably going to take it, right? Yeah. I like cookies. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So the this is, and, and there's not a secret. I wish there was a, a one size fits all answer on how to, how to offer this, but that's a framework for how to think. So I have people on a list who are getting my content that are, you know, hopefully they're they're It's resonating with them. So now what is a baby step offer that I can put in the PS of the email? That's a, essentially offering them a cookie. You know, what is the simplest easiest thing for them to say yes to so they can dip their toe in the water and engage with me. So most people, everyone's like, you know, we offer a free consultation, especially like, if, like an attorney, free consultation. People are afraid. People are afraid to get on the phone with somebody because they're either, they're going to feel pressured. They're going to feel um, they might be sold to. So trying to think of an easy way to get people to engage um, that's what steps to, step three is about. So, so a, uh, what are they called? A, 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 you know, lead magnet kind of thing. Yeah. So I like to, to offer a, a couple options. So it could be, you know, it could be uh, get my free book, free download. Um, you know, you still can offer the free, free consultation for people that are, are, are ready for that. But then something, one of my new favorite offers is, um, you know, doing something where like what I'm going to start doing is a, a, a weekly Q and a call. So every Friday at 1130, I'm going to be putting on a free little webinar where I'm going to talk about a new topic related to the book and feel free to pop in and ask any of your questions. You don't need to turn the camera on. You don't need to say anything. You could be in your pajamas, just show up and we're, we're going to be there. Why don't you come join us? So that's an easy way for someone to dip their toe in the water and engage with me where they won't feel pressured. And, but what I know that once they maybe take that step and show up for the call, it's already going on. It's not special for you. It's just going on, come, come on down and join us. Um, kind of like an open house, maybe. Yeah. With cookies. <laughs> With cookies, yeah. Michael Deferred, the book is How to Connect. Now, Michael, we uh, we I'm I'm pretty conversational. We're we're free flowing. I like to go where the conversation goes. But I make everybody who uh, who watches or listens to the show, I make them one promise that they're going to walk away with at least one thing that they can do today, one action step that they can take as soon as they put up put the phone down, as soon as they shut their laptop, as soon as they finish listening to me and my friends run our mouth, they're going to have one <laughs> action step that they can uh, they can use to, to make their lives better, to create health, happiness, and prosperity in their life. Uh, so from what you've been talking about today, from connection to authenticity oh. to presence, I need, to, I need to boil it down to one physical step, one thing that people can do right freaking now to start uh, to start making all this happen. Man, I wish I prepared for this one. <laughs> Let's see. I guess I have two things going on in my head. Um, one would be um, to make a list of your your past ten clients, you know, and uh, and try to think about. Uh, so, write down all your past ten clients and write down. Um, why they value you that might, you know, it, what we're looking for are, are clues as to what, what makes you connect with other people. Mm -hmm. That would be, that's one thing. And then the other thing in the mindfulness camp would be, um, let's see. I think the easiest way, You know, the, next time you, when you brush your teeth tonight, br take, take a couple extra minutes and brush your teeth as slow as possible. This is nuts. 
brush your teeth and feel every sensation and see if you can focus so much on brushing your teeth on the physical, physically brushing your teeth that you don't have any thoughts that you don't even notice any thoughts that you're, you're working so hard at brushing your teeth that your brain's quiet. See if you can do that. Smell the mint, baby. Smell the mint. How's that for a, for a crazy woo woo suggestion? There you go. Woo woo. I'm all about the woo. -woo. Michael Defern, how to connect. Uh, Michael, if people wanted to get in touch with you about the book, if they wanted to find out more about your writing, if they wanted to find out about your, your video production services, tell us how they get in touch with you and uh, how they'd go about that. MichaelDefern.com. So that's kind of like the, the hub where you can find links to everything else we're doing. And so the book, the how to connect book is free. Um, the PDF downloads free uh, at michaeldefern.com slash connect. Okay. And, uh, and I'll have, I'll have those links on, on the show page. We'll put those in the show notes, uh, show notes. So you'll get there. Anything else you want to say, brother, we're going to wrap it all up here. Uh, uh, leave it, leave us with a golden nugget. You want another nugget? No, nah, I don't I, just, <laughs> give us a, give us a cookie recipe, man. <laughs> Focus on, you know what? One of my favorite, uh, there's lots of gurus out there. I'm big into Eckhart Tolle. I still even know if I'm saying his last name, right? If it's Tolle or Tolle, you know what I'm talking about? I do. Be here now. You know, something I do in the morning, I go on YouTube and I pick out one of his videos and I just sit. And like I said, I, I'm not good at just sitting and trying to meditate. So I tend to find something physical to focus on. But, you know, if you're not already into it, just give it a try. Like practicing meditation and mindfulness, it just changes everything. Like everything, everything you, you're trying to do succeed in life. It, if you, if you're, if you do it with more mindfulness and presence, th things just are like 10 times easier. That's, that's what you're missing. You're not missing. You're not missing the strategy. You're missing the, how the, the, the way that you, what's that, that line. It's, it ain't the way, it ain't what you do. It's the way that you do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what it's about. All right. I, uh, I'm, 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 well, I'm smelling what you're cooking, brother. I, uh, I'm, I'm on that page. So uh, tonight I'm going to brush my teeth one at a time, <laughs> one at a time. Thanks for being on the show, man. Best of luck with the book. Best of luck with the video. Uh, let me know how I can be a, of service to Michael Deferred, man. Cool. Thanks, Terry. Be well. Get you some radio. You've been listening to the Get You Some Radio Show. Subscribe today at terrylancaster.tv to hear more episodes, win valuable cash and prizes, and get free training to help you create an army of buyers who know, like, and trust you before they've ever even met you. It's a big, wide world, boys and girls. Get out there and get you some.